The day has finally arrived, everyone, and AC Infinity has officially announced the brand new Ion Frame LED. In today's podcast, we're going to be taking a deep dive look and an actual and exclusive insider's conversation with someone who works at AC Infinity, discussing the specs on the light and getting a first hand look on the actual Ion Frame itself. Also in a sec, I will cover how you could be one of four lucky winners who are going to get to actually test this light this month pre-launch before it's live. We'll talk about more of that in a sec. First, I think it's important to say that yes, this light is on pre-order and available right now. They have a 20% discount, I think, on pre-orders. And not only that, guys, but you can use a coupon code on top of that. So coupon code HOMEGROWTV is gonna get you an extra 10% off on checkout and it helps support the channel too. So before we get started, I think it's also worth mentioning that there is a part two to this interview where we sit down with a test grower who has actually had his hands on this light for the last three months and has done a full cycle. So we're gonna get to pick his brain on test results, how it's been working, notes and in-depth knowledge on everything Ion Frame and Ion Beam UV. So make sure you don't miss that, which is gonna be launching tomorrow. Also wanted to give a big shout out to Hi again, who have helped us majorly with this video in providing us with the visuals of the actual Ion Beam. So all the shots you're gonna see later in this video were shot from Hi again at their studio and grow setup. And it's also worth mentioning that they have a full unboxing setup video and in-depth first look at the ion frame there at their place. Grower Joe from Basement Autoflower has you covered over on his channel with an unboxing and first look at the Evo 3 for those two by four growers. So before we get into the podcast, let me tell you how you could be testing one of these with me this month before launch. You see, I'm extremely blessed to have been selected as a tester for this new ion frame, meaning I get my hands on it a month before and I actually get to use it. And that by no doubt is thanks to you. And those of you who support the channel comment on our videos and obviously subscribe so as a way to give back to you guys i went and asked the team is there any way that i could include four people as the testers right so giving you an opportunity to join the tester team and all you got to do is simply watch this entire podcast and comment down below your favorite part and why in one week time seven days we're going to be selecting two winners from this podcast and two winners from the podcast episode launching tomorrow, the part two interview. It's important to note that if you are selected as a winner, you will be required to actually send notes and take part in the testing program. That's what this is. And keep in mind that this light obviously isn't the final light going to market. This is what's being sent out to the testers. So just keep that in mind. But the cool news is that you're going to get your hands on it before anyone else. So that's pretty much it. Hang out. Tell me your favorite part and good luck. Without further ado, let's jump into the podcast. Brandon, what is up, brother? Thank you so much for coming out here on the Home Grow TV podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you and just um, congratulations on your incredible channel. It's very cool to be here. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the kind words. And for me, it's an honor to have you on here. I know, like we said in the intro, this is like the first of its kind. It's the first time we get to like an inside little, you know, view of, of what's going on at AC Infinity, what you guys are doing over there. Brandon, tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at AC Infinity. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've been with AC Infinity for coming up on a year now, and uh, it's been just been a blast. Right. My role, my role, I work with uh, product development. And uh, we just uh, try to get everything ready for marketing as things are coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. The way I like to think of it is like if product development was like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and uh, marketing is like getting out those golden tickets for everybody. Yep. I'm just like an Oompa Loompa, just hanging out, <laughs> keeping everyone on the same page and doing a little song and dance when I need to. So yeah. That's awesome, man. I just can only imagine like what's really going on over there and that kind of stuff. And I can imagine how busy you guys have been over the last little bit because as you know, listening to this podcast, guys, whether you're listening to it or watching it on YouTube, you've heard about this new LED, right? The ion frame. So if you don't mind, Brian, I would love to jump right into it. Yeah. What, like, what is this ion frame and kind of what are the distinguishing features from the other previous AC Infinity lights that you guys have had? So one thing is I'm sure you know is that here at AC Infinity, we don't even release a product unless we feel that it's really going to be an innovation to the market. So it took us many, many years of research. Product development was knocking their heads against the wall. We were just trying to justify even releasing a bar light that we felt was amidst the strongest of the lights out there. And 
And that led me here today talking to you about the ion frame. You know, we're one of the first to feature a majority of Samsung Evo diodes, and we're using them because these diodes are more efficient than any previous gen diodes being used on the market. So LM301H, LM301B used by, you know, Mars Hydro, Spider Farmer. We are now running with the innovation that Samsung's doing. That is Evo, which has a 3.14 micromole efficacy. So we're excited about that. We're excited about the schedule programming in the controller. I'm pumped about the UIS ecosystem and connecting that to our ion frame to control it with your inline fans, clip fans, humidifiers, what have you. Just keep it all automated, keep it all simple. Wow, that was one of the things that immediately caught my eye. And again, that's why I was so excited for this because we get to dive into the real question. I'm sure a lot of us are thinking about this. And that was like the term like overspect. What specifically do you mean like when AC is talking about an overspec like this ion frame? And I think that's kind of what you were touching on. Can we go a little bit deeper into the specs and what you guys mean by the overspec? Yes, the overspec. Um, that we've been uh, hyping that up because this is 20 to 30% more wattage than the ion wow. board. As you grow and advance your setup, what we're talking about is this can handle like sealed CO2 setups, larger grow setups, and it's going to be able to handle like 1800 to 2000 PPFD. Wow. Oh my God. So the overspec hitch is basically, and to put it into my terms as a home grower running in tents anywhere from the two by four, four by four, we got the five by 10 here now. Basically, it would allow me to install something in my tent to have it like, you know, good specs and everything I would need for normal veg and normal flour. But let's say my plan later in the year is to jump into AC, CO2, and that kind of things, that same light, then I would go higher into the over specs or like be turning it up. Is that correct? <laughs> Exactly. You nailed it. You nailed it. Got yeah. you. Awesome. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That blows you in. I cannot wait to see that running in person. And I know, especially on Instagram, you see a lot of these growers that are outside of tents. You see them in full room grows. Why don't we cover really quickly, like the different sizes as far as like it, you know, I know the over spec is a real thing and it's going to fit into a certain size, but it might actually flower out a different size than that. Do you mind walking us through just really quickly the sizes again on each light and what tent it's really going to match up for? For sure. Yes, well, let's start with the Evo 3. That is uh, built for the 2x4 space. Evo okay. 4, 3x3. Three Evo 6 lines up nicely with the 4x4. Four four. Evo 8 can line up with the 5x5. Five five. And Evo 10, that's the 1000 watt for a 6x6 six, uh, six six space. But again, gotcha. that can fit in a smaller space. And like you're saying, you're going to get a fuller coverage, entire tent. Is getting Got that you. Light. So an example, like with with the the Evo 10, where you say this could flower out like a six by six space, would it technically fit in a five by five tent? Yes, absolutely. Got yeah. you. Got mm -hmm. you. Okay, got you. So. And, and if that was like in a sealed room, that's what we're talking about, the overspec. Gotcha. Okay, I'm becoming clear on that now. So if that 5x5 five five was sealed, it was CO2, mm -hmm. you know, you're running everything you could in there, that Evo 10 would fit in that 5x5, five five, thousand watts just blaring on those ladies. For sure. You got your controller, CO2 regulator, got the thousand watts, you're cooking. Got you. And then so if you weren't running CO2, you wanted to run it in a outside of a tent, that could easily flower six by six in size. I think I'm becoming clear now when you guys are talking about the different sizes and specs. And I'll make sure we have that up on the screen and kind of going through and showing as much as we have available here during the podcast. For sure. And we appreciate you, you know, walking everyone through this because it's exciting. It's a lot. It's exciting, but it's a lot of new info. Totally, dude. No, I appreciate you taking the time because these are legit questions that I'm like, I want to nerd out on. And I know a lot of us listening to this and watching this are thinking the same thing. Talking about some of the growers, because again, it's sick that you guys have all the different sizes for the smallest like home grower with the two by four all the way up to something bigger. This is a question that's coming in from one of your guys' actual growers. This is from Neil from High again. My question is about the new Evo chips that are being used and the new lights. How are they different from other chips on the market and how are they better? Fantastic question. So a little bit of background uh, for those who aren't as into the specs. A lot of like Samsung diodes to start, they were like LM301B. And that's just like a really powerful light. 
But that's for general lighting. And a lot of growers just jumped on that right away, of course, because it works in growing. But as uh, Samsung was trying to keep up, they moved into the LM301H, mm-hmm. you know, higher efficiency, even more powerful. Now right. we're just trying to keep up. We're just trying to be at, you know, at the front of the line by breaking out the LM301H uh, Evos, <laughs> Evo diodes. Got you. It, it's a lot of letters and numbers, but basically what that means, this is, it's like the highest efficiency we have right now. Okay. And it's a fuller spectrum. So you're just more powerful wattage, higher efficiency. Do we know any specifics as far as like the efficiency side of it, rough estimates or difference from the last diodes that you guys were using? Yeah. So this is 1% more efficient than the LM301H, which may not sound like a lot, but LM301H is already the most efficient on the market. So we're going even higher while improving the light quality. Like I said, more balanced light spectrum. And on top of that, we're still trimming away at that efficiency. Wow. So that's a big statement. Is it fair to say that this is the most efficient diodes on the market then? Right now, yes. <laughs> Product well, development stories that work, you know, so. Yeah, and as small home growers, that's something, doesn't matter the percent or the amount. Efficiency and getting better is always something I want to hear. It's always a place that I want to be able to save more money in. So really good to hear and exciting on that. Let's talk a little bit about the spectrum differences that we're seeing now on this ion frame compared to what we might have been seeing before on things like the S44 or the S24 that I might have run here on the channel. Yeah, so what we're doing, we're doing the white diodes, red diodes, a little bit of the UV. And what that really does is it just gives the plants a more balanced spectrum, more natural spectrum, and more mimicking uh, natural daylight. Because with the red, you're just getting, you're getting the height, but you're not getting the width, the bushiness. So we're keeping the red, but we're also bring, bumping up the blue and just overall happier, healthier plants are coming out of that. Is it fair to say that this is thought of a little bit more as far as final flower in mind in the new ion frame? Absolutely. So the UV, that's actually for the late flowering. But like I was referencing with the blue, that's going to help out through every stage of development. Got you. Again, every single one of these answers, it gets me more and more excited to get my hands on one of these, see this. Um, and at the time of you guys seeing this this YouTube podcast or again listening to it, the Iron Frame is now available, I believe, for pre-order. Or it's actually available. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I just wanted to double check because I honestly <laughs> didn't know at the time of recording this video. So if you guys are listening to it, it is available. Pre-order, um, before we sorry. Get- pre-order. Pre-order. Got you. So it is available for those listening to it. It is available on pre-order. Um, so right away, I'm immediately like getting antsy to go look at the website and see it. And I haven't even seen it at the time of recording this. But before we move into more of the specs, could you fill me in a little bit about the inspiration to now move to the bar light or the inspiration behind the iron frame in general? I know before, you know, I was already getting great results with the S44s and the S24s. What brought you guys to, to move in now to the bar lights and the iron frame? What drove it? It's just innovation. I mean, the product development team, they're always up to something. Tough to keep up with them. We try. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we just wanted something that could bridge residential and commercial give people more opportunity to grow, but also just keeping it simple. You know what I mean? Like you can right. still automate it. You can still schedule everything. You can still pair it with your current grow lights. It's just uh, more opportunity and more more chances for people to expand their grows. Got you. On the easy integration part, this is something, again, I've just got to hear the rumors or see little pieces of, w- of what's up here, but there's a little dongle or how does this work with the integration, like w- with this dongle and, and connecting to naturally like kind of any other UIS system? How does that all work? Yeah, the dongles, we're always working on those. And honestly, like the growers and like all our customers are always working on those too. I'm so impressed with people <laughs> that people come <laughs> up with on their own just to keep on, you know, like we're innovating, growers are innovating, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, we try to keep it simple for everybody uh we have a two-in-one splitter okay and what that does is it lets you daisy chain your lights got you yeah so let's say you have a row of ion boards just single file line they're all following the same programming 
all connecting to the same controller, UIS controller. And so this little dongle that, that's included, let's just say I wasn't, I didn't have anything else AC. I really wanted to get the ion frame shows up. This little dongle, is this going to now, is this basically my control for the power? Is this like kind of my dimmer in a way? Is this have any other functionality like with time or anything? Or is this kind of just your out of the box control? The current dongle, it actually works with the ion frame to uh, connect the driver and the, your UIS controller. Gotcha. But we are working on, we're coming out with the RJ11 dongle. Okay. And what's that? That lets the ion frames, or really any of our lights, connect to other controllers on the market through the RJ11 cables. So if you already have a lighting controller you love, you can just integrate our lights into your existing setup. Super easy. Got you. Oh, wow. Cool. Awesome. So you guys already have that thought of right away. And do you guys know a more or less of when that will be hitting the market, when that's going to be available as well? Yeah, we're, we're aiming for a summer release. We're getting that awesome. ready as soon as possible. Just because we know, like, People have their setups, people have their equipment, and, you know, it's never, never one size fits all. Right, you know? yeah. It's mix and match. It's like pick your favorite toy, and we just want to make sure everything's available, like whatever your setup, and just to have, like, have fun and just personalize it. Got you. So you mentioned something earlier on that last answer, and that was the driver. I know there's some new news on that, so I'm going to go ahead and roll the next question here from another grower. What's going on, guys? Grower Joe here from the Basement Grow Show, and I got a question about the drivers on the new lights. Are they going to be removable? I'm growing in a little 2x4 tent, and being removable is going to allow me to maintain those temperatures. Looking forward to your answer. Joe, love the enthusiasm. Love the question. Absolutely. Man, you can place this driver wherever you want. Within nice. six feet, of course, six feet. Uh, that's the cord. I uh, can't make too many promises, but um, yeah, you know, outside your tent, you can mount it. We have we have all the tools to mount um, along your tent. If you want to install it in your wall, uh, we try nice. to make that as, yeah, just versatile as possible. That's awesome. And this is going to be the first LED that you guys have then with that option. What's your natural thought? Just you, especially being in the position that you're in and, and being at AC Infinity, what do you think us growers are going to do with that? Do you think we're going to have it mostly mounted on the wall? Do you think we're going to have it inside the tent or what, what's your general guess there? I think people are going to mix it up, you know, just give it some space, let it breathe. Yeah, I think that's immediately my first thing too. I'm excited to see what it comes with mounting wise because um, that's something I've also never seen. I've actually mounted on my wall there outside. So I can't wait to see the looks on that. I got another grower question here for you and this one's from Heaven at High again. What if any feedback did you use in designing this light to set AC Infinity apart from others like it on the market? Hello, Heaven. Excellent question. What we do is we always listen to our customers. And that was helpful on the iron frame. But honestly, it's helpful for like every product, every device we come out with. A little like peek behind the scenes. Our customer service, their growers, they know what they're talking about. When someone calls with a question or an issue, customer service like is on it. And then they're on us. So it makes our job so much easier that there's just this constant communication. And I love hearing back because... It helps with like product development. It helps us like, it even helps us like fix our manuals. You know what I mean? Like right. someone's like, yo, what's up with this like controller or something? Like what's up with this instruction? And we're like, good catch. Thank you. So yeah, they keep us on our toes in the best way possible. That's awesome. And I think for me as a grower and especially speaking to a company and giving feedback, like, it's always something I've been hesitant before and I just because I didn't think the company was ever going to listen to me. But I'll say this every time I've shared any type of feedback with you guys, just the seriousness that has been taken into account with that has been amazing. And even when I get on my bro down calls with my other friends and my grow bros around the world, and we're talking about certain things and that gets sent to you guys. I can just see the seriousness that that gets taken into. And one funny, hilarious example is like grower Joe, when he was filming this video or he was, you know, working on his plants, he stands up, he knocked the light down. And I think like by the time I got my next LED, there was like little hooks on uh on on the light that like stopped it from like falling off like that and i was like wow that was like actual change so ha like so fast yeah. and from one tent to my two by four and then six months later when i got my second two by four i noticed there was like flaps over the zipper and there was like some little changes here and there to like little things and i was like these are 
amazing little differences that I'm seeing taken action on so quickly. So I personally want to say props to you guys. I think you've done an amazing job at it. And that really was a good question because it's not often you think about it, like how, what companies are actually listening to the growers? Are they listening to feedback? And I just think we've seen the examples in front of our eyes over the last like six months and props to you guys for that, for sure. Appreciate One it. thing that, that got me really curious, right? I heard new LEDs coming. We've got the iron frame. The first thing that popped in my mind because I get the question all the time, and no matter what LED I run on the channel, it's, is there a sunrise and a sunset feature of some kind? Are we going to see that here now with the ion frame? Yeah, actually, yes. That is uh, that is coming. That's coming with me. No way. Yeah, very excited about that. And, yeah, it's going to be right in the controller that comes with the whole package. What kind of flexibility are we going to have with those settings? So it can actually go, you can do like a, up to a six hour range, which is wow. crazy. Yeah. So zero to a hundred percent up mm -hmm. to six hours to get like as natural as a light cycle as possible. And yeah. obviously people are going to customize that and see what works best for their grow. But yeah, right. try and keep it as flexible as possible. No doubt. That's like one of the first things I want to ask everyone tuned in, or at least my audience here listening to this that does use that feature and ask for it all the time. Like, what is the ideal settings for that? And let me know in the comments, guys, because I think that's something I would definitely like to test on that light because I've never seen it before. I've never used it before. I've just seen a lot of talk about it. So that's really cool that you guys threw that option in there and right out of the box. So no additional purchase needed or anything like that. The ion frame itself is going to come with the ability to do that. Really cool. So I'd love to talk about something that we lightly mentioned earlier and something that we haven't covered yet. And that's like the two in one dongle chain, some more information on that. And then the rumored four in one splitter hub. So can you give me some more details on that? What's that gonna allow us to do now as growers? Yeah, for the two in one daisy chain dongle, that's a splitter that connects our products through one long line. So if you have a bunch of grow lights, any devices in a larger room, they just connect one after the other. And that closest light or device to the controller, that's the only one that needs to be connected. The 4-in-1, that's a hub. It works more like a traditional splitter, where it splits the signal from one port to four. And all your devices are going to plug into these ports and, again, share the same programming. The cool part is the daisy chain dongle that can connect 20 devices to share the same programming using just one UIS port. And you're working with 20 devices. The 4-in-1? You can connect that to other hubs and go up to 64 devices just through one UIS port. So that would allow me, for example, for any of us that have a 4x8 or a 5x10, like I noticed my 5x10 has two slots for a controller 69, and right now I have up to eight things set up in it. Yeah. Would this now allow me to just have one single controller and everything hooked up to one? Exactly, yeah. Oh my God, I love that. Yeah, because there's actually quite a few clip fans and it's not a big deal, but there's a few clip fans I have in the back of the tent that I don't have hooked up to my controller right now. Um, and again, I just have them set, you know, set them to eight and then I'm, every so often I might have to go and change that. But now basically I can just cable in everything. We're set to go, boom, right from my iPhone, control everything. Bingo. Okay, got you. Are we able to ask you rough timelines? Is that available information or is that top secret? The four port... That was supposed to come out in summer, but you know, sometimes product development, they like more time to play, get things ready. Uh -huh. You know, we try to, you know, keep them happy. So uh, <laughs> looking at fall right now, fall for the, uh, the hub. Okay, right on. So the next question is gonna come from a grower again, and this is gonna be Chris, Mr. Grow It. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Chris, AKA Mr. Grow It, and I got my boy Max here, just chilling on my lap. <laughs> We're wondering what is the price going to be on these new lights? Is it going to be priced more budget friendly or is it going to be priced with some of the higher priced lights on the market today? Mr. Max, Mr. Grow It, pleasure and an honor. You know, price, that's a crucial question. So what we try to do is we try to keep it as uh, cost effective as possible and just make it like a real accessible unit that's lower than the higher end lights on the market. Okay, awesome. And I guess one of the first thing that runs to my mind, especially now that we're in pre-order, is there going to be any difference for those who pre-order the light compared to when the actual launches? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So pre-order away, guys. Get in now. Got you. Got you. I guess so. it's going to take forever. We're going to head to the website, check out what the differences will be. One other thing that kind of, I guess, has to do a lot with the cost or a, ma- a question that's asked by many growers when they look at purchasing a new LED, what are the details going to be as far as like the warranty, customer support that's offered with the new grow light? Two-year warranty, any product. So if you grab a grow light, if you grab um, a trellis net, two-year warranty we got you covered i think that's really cool and unique that your guys's actual support too has grower knowledge or is is growing on is that something you guys encourage or is that something that just kind of naturally happened with the support team it happened naturally but it's a happy thing that's happening just because customer service product development everyone's kind of involved and it just makes it smoother every step of the way no doubt. I can only imagine. Can we talk a little bit about the ion beam UV, what it is, how we're going to use it, and how is it going to be in addition to the ion frame? Yeah, absolutely. I love the ion beams. They're so convenient. You can place them anywhere. And that includes you can just magnetically mount them onto the ion frame. And so is this mainly going to be a product that we're going to be adding into late flower, or is this going to be something that is going to be useful throughout the entire phase of growth? Absolutely. Yeah, that would I'd say more late flower UV is just something that people are still experimenting with and learning about and seeing how it best affects their grow. So I'd say right now, like less is more and just see how it affects that initial grow you use it with and then get crazier with it as you go because it's exciting. We're, We're happy to offer the UV. A lot of people have been asking for it. And I think it's going to pair nicely with the iron frame. You can also put it in smaller tents and because it just, again, magnetically mounts to the bars as well. Got you. Is this going to be available in the kit? Is all, is all this going to be like available separately as add-ons? Or like for me, I'm a big fan of the advanced grow kit, right? Like it, everything in one. And for me, when I get questions from new growers, like where's the best place to start as far as gear? Well, I often recommend those kits because it has everything all in one. Are you guys thinking of doing the same thing as far as the ion frame? Are those going to be built into the advanced grow kits? And then what about the the UV as well? Absolutely. Right now, those are separate, but we're definitely looking down the line. We're always adding to our kits. We're always seeing what is like best for a new grower or an experienced grower who just wants to set up a new tent. I will say, though, that we do have a 5x5 five five in the works coming out soon that will actually feature the ion frame. So if people are excited looking at a new tent, then that might be something worth waiting for. Ooh, that is cool news, especially for those who have watched a lot of our Seed to Harvest here on Home Grow TV. We've been a big fan of 5x5s in the past. You know, we thought it was a nice step up from the 4x4, a little bit of that extra space. And that's what kind of had us leading towards the 5x10 that we have set up now with the AC Infinity. I'm just imagining how the new the new LEDs are going to fit in there. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Major combo. So you guys are really good at, at like having a sense for your growers, but for those who want to have a sense for like AC Infinity, what's going on on the consistent basis? Where can we follow along? Where's the most up-to-date place to follow along with information and news coming out with your guys' products? Really on Instagram, we're super active. We got stories. We're following our growers. We're posting giveaways. So I'd say that's the best place to reach us right now and just keep gotcha. an eye out for exciting announcements. Yeah, Instagram, definitely a good place, guys. And I think I'll add on to that with the After Dark show. You know, the time I posting this I video, we After got Dark, one. Man. I can't, I'm sorry to jump in. I'm sorry to jump yeah. in. After Dark, you guys killed it. Oh, my God. Oh, man. It was a blast. It was an absolute blast. I think the community had a really good time. It was a great turnout. So we definitely have that one coming up really soon. I'll even throw the information down in the description below for the next AC Infinity Live show. I think it's going to be going on on the second hump day, the second Wednesday, right, of every single month. Mm -hmm. So just check your calendar for that. The second Wednesday, we'll be hanging out and probably heavily doing a more deep dive, I think, a lot more on the information because by then, I think a few growers are already going to have their hands on it as far as testing it and seeing some of the specs and different stuff. So the conversation might definitely be a lot more on the the actual hands-on side of things on the after dark. So definitely recommend those tuned in to this uh, podcast to check that out. Check out AC Infinity on Instagram for sure. And Brandon, I just want to thank you so much, dude, for taking the time. I'm sure in your incredibly busy schedule leading up to this launch and everything to take the time to hang out with me and the community here, share some of the info uh, on the new ion frame that's coming out. Wow. 
big day for sure. I cannot wait to see when it's in the hands of everyone else and everyone's actually running with the lights. Is there any final comments or anything that you would like to leave us with here on the podcast of maybe things to come or just some general words of inspiration for growers? First off, I want to thank you for having me, Dakota. This was a great time. Big fan of your work and really impressed with how you and hi again and everyone, Mr. Gr everybody, you guys are just shouting out to the growers giving encouragement, giving advice. And that was one thing in After Dark that I was like super blown away with is just how inclusive it is. And I just love that sense of community. And like someone on like Reddit, people will say like, this is my first plant. How's it going? What do you guys right. think? And everyone just chimes in and it's beautiful. I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it's going to be exciting to see where the, the show turns into for sure. And it's going to be really exciting to see what you guys take our grow gear you know this year like me as a grower it's been so incredible to find you guys ever back when i had my first you know extractor fan my inline fan and to see the evolution that you guys have gone through over the last little bit i'm extremely grateful for the solutions you're bringing to the market as a company so definitely send that up to the to the higher ups and the entire team thank you guys as far as you know behalf of home grow tv and our community for that part and for those listening guys make sure to share this with the grow bro throw a like throw a comment down let's get the word out on this Beautiful new piece of technology that has just hit the grow space. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you next week on Home Grow TV. Wow. So there you have it. If you haven't already participated in the giveaway to actually be a tester for this light, make sure you do that now and comment your favorite part from this podcast down below in the comment section. But for those of you who want to know more about the light, come over to the part two of this episode where we sit down with hemp in a pot, weed in a pot, Dan, and we talk about what it was like to have his hands on this thing over the last three months and actually testing it. Oh, and there's more chances to win over there on that episode. So we'll see you over there on part two of the podcast.